Hello and welcome to this film about polyamides. Um, you might be pleased to know that this is the last of the films about the year 12 chemical reactions and the waste course. So very near to the end of the whole course now. Um, what we're going to be doing in this film is we're going to be looking at polyamides and why they can be considered to be examples of condensation polymers and how we can draw the formation of a polyamide from amine and carboxylic acid monomers. This is actually quite similar to polyesters. So uh, if you have watched that film and understood it, this one shouldn't be too tough. Um, hopefully, you, just like with polyesters and with addition polymers, you'll also be able to look at the polymer chain that we see in a polyamide and decide what monomers must have gone together to make that polymer chain. And hopefully, finally, uh, you will understand why amino acids are able to form molecules called polypeptides. So um, let's first of all look at how amines are involved in condensation reactions. Now you don't really need to know the reactions of very many amines, but this is where it really comes in and becomes, becomes quite important. Now if we remember what's happened in condensation reactions before. We had an alcohol reacting with a carboxylic acid. And the carboxylic acid lost its OH, and the alcohol lost its H. Now that's still going to happen. So we're still going to lose water, and that's why this is called a condensation reaction. Okay, But in this case, instead of forming a new bond between the carbon of the carboxylic acid and the oxygen of the alcohol, we're now forming the bond between that carbon and the nitrogen of the amine. So if I just color code my amine green and my carboxylic acid blue, let's just show you what the amide is going to look like that we make from this condensation reaction. So I'm going to have CH3, C double bond O, and then a new bond to my green NH, CH2, CH3. I don't have to name this amide, but what it is good to be able to do is to be able to spot the fact that I've got this amide group here. And then remember, an amide looks a lot like a carboxylic acid, uh, sorry, like an ester, except instead of having an O here, it's got an NH. Okay, So the two molecules are joined via a nitrogen instead of via an oxygen, like they were in an ester. Okay, But I suppose that's to be expected because we've used an amine and not an alcohol to make our amide. Okay, so once again, this is a condensation reaction because we've lost a small molecule. And once again, if you want to make a polymer from these molecules, it's good if you've got something that can do a condense condensation reaction at both ends of the molecule. So here's something called a diamine. It's got two amine groups. And here's something which we've seen before called a dioic acid. Now, as before, we're going to lose an OH and one of these H's. So if I just, I'm just going to draw this like that instead, and I'm going to show you the, the atoms that are lost. And remember, we're going to form a new bond between the nitrogen and the carbon there. Okay. So now if I just start maybe from this nitrogen, like I did with the alcohol before, okay. So we'll, we'll do my amine pops, my amine, well, I should have included that nitrogen, but I'm including I'm drawing this molecule as blue, I'm going to draw this part as green, okay? So we're starting with the blue, I'm going to have an NH here, which is going to extend further because this can join to another carboxylic acid, but that will be the end of my repeating unit there, okay? I'm then going to a CH2 and a CH2. Remember, you don't see these kind of formulas very much in exams, but it's just a nice simple way of drawing things, so I'm using them in these videos. Then we're going to an NH, Right? Then we've got a new bond, and now we start on the green molecule where we've got a um, carbon here, a double bond O, off to a CH2 here, and another carbon double bond O over here. And now this OH is going to be lost, remember, because it's going to form water with the next amine. And then I'm going to have a new bond, but as soon as I get beyond here, I'm going to start repeating myself. Right, I'm going to get to another nitrogen. 
So my repeating unit here involves both those monomers, okay, but it doesn't repeat itself. So in other words, the polymer would involve this repeating unit repeating itself a lot, but what I'm putting in the brackets to show the repeating unit, I'm not repeating any atoms. Okay, so by the time I start, if, I, if I'd written any more here, I'd be repeating what I wrote over here. Okay, so there's the repeating unit of a polyamide, and bear in mind this is very similar to that in a polyester, except I've swapped my oxygens from the alcohol for nitrogens. The reverse problem, as usual, is finding out what monomers were involved. So this is about amide hydrolysis, and amide hydrolysis is basically the same as ester hydrolysis, except that we're not breaking an ester bond anymore, we're breaking an amide bond. But once again, we're putting OH back on the carboxylic acid and H back on the amine, where it would have been the alcohol, in an ester. Okay, now this diagram shows us nylon, nylon 6,6, a very commonly used um, polyamide. These amides are often used as synthetic fibers, and some of them are extremely strong. These things are used in bulletproof jackets. Okay, now if I'm just going along this polymer chain, and I'm just going to highlight any amide molecules. Okay, not amide molecules, but amide functional groups. Okay, now if I do that, what I can then do is imagine what's going to happen if I break these amide groups. Okay, so between the nitrogen and the carbon-oxygen double bond. Okay, so I'm going to break all these amide groups like so. Between the nitrogen and the carbon-oxygen double bond. Now, what do I end up with? Well, if I look at this monomer here, I've got NH2 at one end of it. Okay, if I just, sorry, I'm just going to circle this one in green so I can distinguish it from the other monomer in a moment. Okay, then there's one CH2, two, three, four, five, and six, six CH2s, and then another NH2 at the end. So there's one of my monomers, and if I highlight the other monomer in blue, I'm going to be making a C double bond O, but remember I'm putting the OHs back, so there's my OH, and then one, two, three, four carbons in between. So here there's CH2 four times before I get to the next carboxylic acid functional group. Okay, now why is this molecule called nylon 6,6? Well, because both of the monomers have six carbons in their chain. We're using hexane 1,6-diamine and hexane uh, or the hex hexane dioic acid, this is called. So because they've both got six carbons in them, we call this polymer nylon 6,6. Well, it's not, the nylon isn't to do with that, but the 6 and the 6 is. Okay, and this information here is kind of just for your interest, really. Okay, now, for some reason, biologists prefer to call amides peptides. So biologists would prefer to call polyamides polypeptides, and polypeptides are often called proteins. Okay, but if you know how polyamides work, then you know how polypeptides and proteins work. If you remember from looking at amino acids, an amino acid has an amino group at one end, or an amine group at one end, and a carboxylic acid group at the other. Now what that means is the amino group from one molecule can con can form can create can take part in a condensation reaction with the carboxylic acid functional group of another molecule. And then that next carboxylic acid functional group can take part in a condensation reaction with the next amine group, and so on and so on and so on. And so I could actually take just one kind of monomer and form a polymer from it. And this is what your body does when it joins lots of um, amino acids together, except it's very rare for your body to take many, many hundreds of the same amino acid. It normally combines different types of amino acids, and the order that it combines them in determines what protein it's making in your body. Okay. Now, this is what a chemist would call an amide group, but what a, a biologist is calling a peptide group, but you can see it's exactly the same principle involved. 
Okay, so in other words, if I'm given two amino acids, I should be able to draw a polymer chain that formed from them by remembering that I'm going to lose water because it's a condensation reaction and that there's going to be a new bond between my carbon oxygen, double bonded carbon, and the nitrogen of the amine group. Okay, so I'm not going to draw this out because this is exactly the same principle as before. I'm just going to hurry along and look at a polypeptide and it might look terrifying but what we're going to do again to try and spot what monomers it was made out of we're just going to identify any amide groups in it remember biologist is calling these peptide groups but it means exactly the same thing okay so there they are okay and what i've got to do is break the bond between the carbon and the nitrogen and then I'm going to put OHs back on the carboxylic acid groups and Hs back on the NHs. So, for example, this thing here, what amino acid would I have had there? Well, I've had CH. The R group on my amino acid, if you remember, they have an R group on, would have been CH2COOH. And then here I'd have had the carboxylic acid functional group. And this end, I'd have had my amine group. Okay, But that's not the only monomer I can spot here. If I circle this one in green, okay, this one's a slightly simpler amino acid. If I draw the green one, I've got a C, an H. The R group this time is an H. I've got a carboxylic acid over here. And I've got an amine on the other end. I might just do one in red, just to show the last one. Okay. And there it is. Perhaps I wish I hadn't because it's quite complex, this one, but never mind. So NH2 at one end, then the CH. The R group is this thing here. So I'm just going to call that R. I'm going to be a bit lazy. So there's my R. And then a carboxylic acid functional group at the other end. Okay. So polyamides can make synthetic fibers, but they can also make proteins. So uh, you might be shown pictures of proteins as well as those synthetic fibers and asked to show asked to say what amino acids made up that protein okay but it's always the same principle identify the amide groups break them up and put your ohs and your hs back in okay well as i say that's the end of the year 12 organic reactions um well done for making it to the end. Um, hopefully now that you've watched this film you know what a polyamide is and why it's um, an example of a condensation polymer. Uh, hopefully you can draw an, a polyamide forming from amine and carboxylic acid monomers and also from amino acids, I suppose. Um, hopefully you can look at a polymer chain, whether it's synthetic or natural, naturally occurring and decide what monomers it's made up of. And hopefully you can understand, well, I suppose we've talked about this already, why amino acids are able to form polypeptides. As always, um, I'd be very grateful for any questions that you have to ask, whether that be on the comments page on YouTube or if you wanted to come in and see me. Um, but please make sure you do that because there's some fairly difficult material in these films and it, um, it's important that you understand it.